The new groundbreaking update introduces terrain shaping, giving you the ability to move soil and modify the terrain to your liking. In order to do this, you need a vehicle equipped with a special bulldozer blade, and there are quite a few of those in War Thunder. The HC variant of the American Abrams, the Leopard 1A5 and the Leopard 2A4, the Japanese Type 74E and the Type 90. Other vehicles featuring dozer scoops are the British Centurion Mark V AVRE and the Chieftain Mark III, the Chinese PTZ-89 SPG, the French AMX-40 MBT. Then you have the BMP-3 in the Chrysanthema, all variations of the T-72 and the T-80 series, the T-90A, the T-64B, the STRV-103C. It's a long list. Regardless of the vehicle you picked, it's a good idea to check the key bindings before going into an actual match. By default, you engage your dozer blade by pressing left control plus T, but you can bind it to anything that works for you. Just go to controls, then ground vehicles, scroll down to the miscellaneous section, and there it is. Entrenching, enable slash disable. All done. Now you're ready to roll out and build all the sandcastles you want. It works like this. When you press the designated buttons, the vehicle switches to the digging mode. If your blade's down when you move, you also push a layer of soil in front of you, creating a small mound. If you go over the same area several times, you can create a proper trench that will offer good protection to you till the end of the battle. Most tanks can hide behind this improvised cover without even exposing their turrets. And it's not just ground vehicles that get access to this feature. Aircraft can also shape the terrain by dropping heavy bombs. For instance, a blast of a 500 kilogram bomb makes a crater that is big enough to hide a tank in it. Two tanks can fit into a crater left by a three-ton bomb. And a monster like the FAB 500 creates a whole damn pit. If things go south, firing mounds and bomb craters can save a tanker's life, or make life significantly more difficult for the enemy. Let's say you're on Stalingrad, and the enemy fire is so intense that you can't even peek out of a corner. Well, you can always make a makeshift uh, defilade right in front of you. This way, only your turret is exposed to the enemy while the vulnerable lower glacier and your hull are protected by the cover you've just made. Obviously, it doesn't make you invincible, but that's an additional obstacle that an enemy shell has to pierce first. If your opponent uses APFSDS rounds, one meter of soil provides roughly the same protection as 50 millimeters of steel. And in the case of heat projectiles, around 250 millimeters. If you're caught in the open, a good ditch dug out in a timely manner can be your only hope to survive. Deploy some smoke and get to digging while enemies can't see you. If you're fighting on uneven terrain, an improvised cover can also become a convenient firing position for vehicles with limited elevation angles. Finally, Precision bombing can be a great way to throw a wrench in the works of the enemy team by getting rid of key passages and important terrain. For instance, if you bomb the hell out of the enemy sniping position on Ash River, then the craters prevent enemy tanks from having a good line of sight to see. Then there is Mosdor, where craters created by big bombs can slow the enemy's advance to the central point. Keep in mind, though, that dozer blades don't do anything to asphalt, paving stones, or rock surfaces. 
and bombs won't leave a scratch on them either. So plan accordingly. Defilades, ditches and traitors are pretty straightforward in their use, but offer a lot of tactical flexibility. It's all about knowing how and when to use the terrain around you. <laughs> Be cunning. Improvise. <laughs> I'll see you in War Thunder.